Hello everyone, welcome back. So this week we have a snake rescue and we are remodeling our outdoor kitchen area. We do a very small amount of pointing. And we help our friends Steve and Natalia uh, with some welding on their roof. They're raising their roof so we're going to weld it for them. And I'm doing a really simple fig and honey ice cream recipe. And we may have a cheaty chicken come turkey cordon bleu recipe. So as you'll see in a video that <laughs> Anne took, I'll show you right now. And then I'll show you how we're going to deal with the problem, hopefully. <laughs> so, so I'm going to uh, say a quick warning to people who don't like snakes. The next three minutes is going to be about snakes. So um, if you want to just look away for three minutes and... Uh, I'll tell you when it's okay to look again. So right, let's reveal. Here you go, Ange. <laughs> yep, he's still there. So we have what looks like a Montpellier snake I need to move in this. with the chickens. I need to move not it. terribly big, but uh, probably not the best place for it to be. I suppose that's about two foot long. Ish. So I'm just going to try and remove some of the purchase and stuff without riling the snake up. And then we're going to try and get it into a bin. this dustbin <laughs> and, and rehome him. Her. It. It. Chicken's it's, probably. It's hissing. Is it hissing? Yeah. Yeah, it's probably. Uh... They, so the Montpellier snakes apparently are slightly venomous. I don't know what that means. Um, oh, there's only one. Can you hear it? Yeah. It looks, yeah, weird sound. It's like really like. Probably not too no, I'm, I'm trying to. I just don't want to put my hand. Well, you need to tip that in towards the snake. Okay. Right. Oh yeah. Right. Right. Um, you take over that. I got me. I got me roll of thing, but I think I've got the thing. Right, sneaky. It's for your own good. Actually, it's for the chick's good, really. Move that out of the way. Put that on its Just do that and then just pop it. <laughs> Don't do anything silly, Snake. Go on, you go. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, get out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whoa. Okay, well it's out. Oh, it's gone back in. Oh, you're joking. No, no, it's tight side. He's going off. Whoa. <laughs> Quick. So, hopefully. <laughs> Well, he's gone down to the garden. So. <laughs> to wait for me when I go and yeah. weed the strawberries later. Okay, well that was uh, exciting. So, it's okay, you can look now, snake's gone. Uh, this week we are mainly doing a revamp of this area. Uh, I'm not happy with the table here where it is. Um, so we're going to show you what we're doing about that and why we're doing it. Now, don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, share our video with everyone you know. That'll be ace.
going for 600 by 2350. Okay, so the plan is, we're going to take this table and turn it 90 degrees and put it coming out this way, yeah? I'm going to take this wall down and put the seat resting on part of this wall. Remake the cupboard doors, etc. Because in here, there's the boiler for the kitchen, because the kitchen sink is right behind that wall. So I'm going to move this over a bit, put the boiler closer to this wall move the gas bottle over, it's on flexible pipes here so it doesn't, it's, it's easy to do and I've still yet to put a hole in there for the uh, flue pipe to go through, I've got the flue pipe just haven't done the hole yet uh, so right now I'm going to move these plants which should be a great fun because they're big and heavy they're not light <laughs> be careful with my little plants, that one's not right don't want to be in the sun either, so too much. Just saying straight back on the knees and all that stuff. Oh, these are lovely. That's Groot. Groot. <laughs> well, this lovely set of roots on. Yes. What well, I'm thinking, does anyone know this is the Monstera? Deli Deliciosa or a Swiss cheese plant. Does anyone know if we put these roots into another um, Source. pot, will they re root and regrow one of these? I don't know. Maybe. Sorry, it's a little bit dark, but I'll like <coughs> this side a And this is biggest, thickest, biggest, thickest, biggest. Okay. He's going to need a new pot one day. This is, uh, we have some water this morning. I don't know whether we'll be able to, because I really don't want to break the pot. But, yes, once again, thank you, Andy and Mandy, for the fabulous foliage. Fabulous foliage. So that's the plants out of the way, uh, I'll start to take this down now, luckily the height of the bench is here which is right on the joint of the block so I should be able to leave two blocks in there to sit the bench on. I'll get rid of the Cornish flag. <laughs> and start beating things.
so couldn't help myself had to get had to get a tool involved this is uh, what we like to call what I like to call little Bertha because big Bertha would be too much of a beast for this I want to try and be a bit more gentle which is why I started by hand um, this one proving particularly tough so we'll get little Bertha on it and we'll break them out in no time Okay, so I'm going to try and explain to you the multiple reasons for moving all this and doing this is Reason number one, the table When we have pizza nights, barbecue nights, whatever, the table being where it is We sometimes have to put some shielding up because the cold, the wind can be a bit cold, you know, when it gets dark Cold on your back, etc. So we're moving the table here, be further inside under, under cover, yeah? Also for the summer when we sit down here now for breakfast we get a fantastic view all the way out to Castella Branco which is also good. Uh, another reason when I installed the boiler initially I never pointed behind it so now I'm going to take it off and move it over just a bit so when I take it off we're going to re- well, well not repoint but point the back of the wall to match everything else and then uh, and then I'll clear up and we'll start doing the table. And another reason for doing all this work undercover in the shade is because it's unseasonably warm for this time of year. It's not the, it's not the heat, it's only 38, 39 degrees C, which is, is uh, cooler than summer temperatures, but because we've had fairly recent rain, it's very humid. So it feels really hot and sticky. So doing work inside undercover is more sensible.
may have needed a clean. So this will be the new screw that the, the boiler hangs on and then when it's in position I'll screw the two fittings in the bottom as well. It's just, um, just a slotted so it slots on and drops down. Take the old one out. These won't come out anyway. So now I'll just repoint the wall. So what I like to do is use an old screwdriver just to dig the original mortar out of the walls, which in this case won't be lime, it'll be clay with sawdust and other granite grit added. Basically local, whatever's available locally. this and the cobwebs lots of cobwebs running down the stone then if you get any uh, mortar over the edges it won't stick to the rocks or the stone you just need to get the joints wet there's no place you can't help it but generally just the joints because that's what you want it's where you want your mortar to stick also you can use this in places like here a lot of dust, you have to just wash it down. Hello, ah, good job you popped out mate. Where did you come from? I thought we checked for you. No, 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 go back up that way. Go, keep, keep going up. Don't go in a hole. Go up. Right, let's frighten you out of it with a bit of water. Oh, he's gone over <laughs> And a gecko. So checking before again. Oh, 
for any animals. <laughs> Gecko, spiders, etc. So a lot of people use pointing tools, etc. I tend to find it's just as easy to get your mortar to a suitable consistency and make a little sausage well, sausage like that. There's a big hole here, so we just put this put the whole sausage in the hole, yeah? But if you make little sausages <coughs> like so. I think I find it just as easy. On these type of walls. Make sure you push them in so they go into the all the little gaps and grooves and stuff. So after it's dried enough that you can't really push it, make it an indent with your finger, it's time to get a fairly stiff brush. Just clean off any excess. No hard to explain it. Just brush it in. <laughs> You have to finish through the finger, blend in.
just softening the edges that's all we're doing so there we go after a couple of hours making uh, eucalyptus legs and this uh, Douglas fir top yeah with countersunk big countersunk holes for big bolts and stuff but um, yep that's all done so now just need to go and fit it okay so I've measured 600 mil off the floor to the top of here and we'll put a mark here mm, where it touches that mark represents the underside of the timbers I've just made yeah and then we need to make out so I've I put this on here last night so it's dry today I can stick the bench onto there with the other legs so I need to measure from here the bench is 300 I need a 200 gap between the bench and the table so the table starts at 500 at here yeah so the corner of the table is going to be there right there so I need to put a piece of timber temporarily in here to sit the end on so I can drill the two holes hopefully into this solid granite <laughs> yay even by even by my standards, this is fairly heavy duty. <laughs> so, sometimes beep, Nicholas. Beep. Right. Yeah. So and this needs to be square with the running in line with the with the floor I think that's pretty good yeah so now I just need to drill in those two and luckily it's touching the granite both sides so I just need to drill in these holes here fix into them that's not too bad is it? And then the simple job of lifting the piece of granite over to here. Marble. Marble, sorry. Lifting the piece of marble over to here. Easy stuff. Yeah, we've used a super long um, screw there, but I only had one, unfortunately. And this is a different type of fixing. I'll show you what it is in a minute. These are great. Let's go up, sorry. Just undo it, get a bit of slack. This needs to go up a slight. This needs to stay exactly where it is. <laughs> Parallel bars, isn't it? Parallel bars. That's right, yeah, go on. You can do some parallel bars now. <laughs> like, like this. Yeah. <laughs> and, and squats and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Too old for that. <laughs> okay, just want to show you the fixings. What we used to call redheads. It's a Hilti product, believe it or not. Um, so you drill this into your granite. This piece here, the bottom piece, is, is split, as you can see. And inside is a little, like a bullet with a taper and you, when you put this in the hole you smack the bullet in tight which flares this out yeah when you push this bullet inside up here this flares out and grips into the into the whatever and then you can put a piece of threaded bar or a bolt or anything into it so that's what we fix it in there with so there we go frame firmly fixed into the wall uh, just two legs on the end there 
this is a problem, what, one of the, the other reasons why we wanted to change it, this one has four legs and they're big and chunky and you can't get two chairs in the middle, yeah? So what we decided is go for two, just two legs on the end so you can get, because the table's open and overhang to here so you've got room for a chair on the end and three chairs in there if you, or this is going to be a bench but three people then uh, so now I've got to clean up and then me and Andrew are going to lift that very lightweight marble top onto to here, here. <laughs> Watch that'll, this be, that'll be fun right I think we should just try and move the whole tape yeah. Without fainting. Yeah. Okay. I'll try and do the same here. Is that leg staying for it is yeah? Yeah. Oh. Okay. So how are we doing this? So we need to move it so we're not. This needs as much support as it can. I just don't want it to break. So we just maybe slip it over a section at a time. Right, I'm going to put this over here. But excuse me. Right, can you help it from this way? Yeah. And then to me. Again. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We need uh, to come off this. Don't yeah. We? If I lift it, or if we both lift, we put and push this with your foot. Yeah. Okay, I'm ready. Come on your fingers. Brilliant. So that's the new table position. Yep. And some firewood. <laughs> yeah, and some firewood. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the table in place, and we like a lot. Very simple, sort of almost floating like. Yeah, like that. All we have to do now is move the bench. Uh, and, I, and I need to make feet for the bench because, as you know, the end of the bench will be sitting on here. So, um, yeah. So, I've got my super duper laser level out again in an attempt uh, to try and be clever. Uh, what I want to do, what I am doing, as you can see, the red line on here. So I've set the level up, level with the top of there, which is my bottom of marble level. Yeah, and so I've set the laser to that. And now I've got a red line going around this log here, which is where I need to cut it. Yeah, so I'm going to mark that line, that laser line with a the, with the pencil. Then it'll be easy to see when I cut it with a chainsaw. And the same thing here. See. Yeah, see the red line here. Yeah. So I marked out with a pencil and cut it with the chainsaw. Easy stuff. Okay, so I've just put two lines of adhesive. Take up any discrepancies. <coughs> a bit of a 
discrepancy here. So we'll put a bit of blob there. Squeaky gun. Sounds like a western. So what we're doing on the corners of the bench is just um, find a, a round profile and I'm going to mark that up there like so, both sides and same thing on the table, we we'll use this plate for a round profile, oh I can't use two hands at once, and use this plate here Cut these off. It's quite nice because this one's got a bit missing there anyway. This is so. all chipped anyway. So cut them off, it takes away these sharp corners. You've got banging knees, legs, and have things on it, shins, look. Toys. Bang. In the chick toys. In the chick toys. So there we go. Nearly finished this guys. I'll show you at the end. But in the meantime, let's go and see what Andrew's doing in the kitchen. Ice cream. Fig ice cream. Actually, it's fig and honey ice cream. Wow. So, uh, if you remember, I froze some figs mm -hmm. uh, because that's all going to be better in for the thing. So, even though they've been frozen for a couple of days now, they're really easy to chop up. So, we just chop those up. This one. Because they're high sugar content. Yes. So, they can sit. I've got quite a big bowl of them here already. Need my new bigger bowl. <laughs> right, so that's that. Um, I'm going to do this. This is a no custard method, whereas I often do a custard method one, which there's always the risk of scrambled eggs instead. But Today we're doing a goat's milk, and it's a raw goat's milk. So these are squeezed from our friends Dave and Julie's goats. Uh, thank you very much. So let's say this is actually fresh. Picked it up yesterday evening. I've got a three litre tub, which I'm going to use. So I'm actually going to put in, uh, my measuring jug is a litre, so I'm gonna put in couple of litres of this because I've also got 200 ml of cream which I'm adding so I'll just do two of these a minute mm -hmm. I'm not going to put all of that in yet because I'm going to open this up and then I can use some of that to rinse out the bits of cream that stay behind in the pot because it's cream. What was that? I thought that was a full one. That's all right. This is just for extra creaminess. I don't really need it because I'm using the full fat goat's milk. So, uh... Right, and the rest of that can go in. 
So I'm going to add the honey. Now you can add sugar instead, but because the honey's already sort of melted, I'm going to just put this in. And one other thing, a little bit of vanilla essence or extract, I should say, because this is in is vanilla pods in Agrident. Just a tipple. <laughs> now this is um, last year's honey. I think this is about all we have left. No. Oh, no. But we have some in frames. Yes, so hopefully. Now it's really hard to measure honey, so I'm just going to put some in. Again, the figs are really sweet. This is just to give it, because our honey is quite a strong taste, so, so we should get quite a nice... Do you like the spoon to lick? There's a thing there. Oh no. Right, just do this carefully because obviously the honey's quite sticky. How's the honey, darling? It's getting better. Yeah, it's, it does as it gets a bit older, doesn't it? Okay, so that's all been just mixed together gently. So I'm now just going to have all, this, all these figs. So all those little beauties go in, including that one that got left behind. Come on, you. Now, the fun part. <laughs> That's not going to fit in there, is it? Find out in a minute, won't we? <laughs> Do a little pot, so you can have a little taster pot for later Ooh, yeah. on. As long as I've got most of the honey in it. Yeah. There you go, I'll take that bit out there. Do bear with me one moment while I get a small pot. So there's our figgy ice cream at the moment. Now, I don't know if you can see, but obviously the fruit is currently nearer the top, but because this is going to go in the freezer. And in half an hour, I'll just every half an hour, an hour, I'll just give it a quick stir and distribute everything through. So, because I sadly don't have an ice cream maker, but when it's this easy, I don't really need one. So, pop these into the um, free. I was just about to put them in the oven. <laughs> pop these into the freezer, and uh, there you go. Simple as that. Right, I'm just having a quick cut. Stir a round of the uh, ice cream. I'll just have a look at the little one a minute. So as you can see, it's just starting to, to form a bit of a crust. So what we do, we just bring all the outside frozen pieces in. And then we pop that back into the freezer to carry on. So I say a little way to go yet, but we're this will be ready for tomorrow, so unfortunately you guys won't see this on this video, but we can tell you how nice it was on another one. So this morning in all this wind, <laughs> getting yours a bit quieter. I'm off with uh, the well I borrowed from, <laughs> from um, Tony and Nikki and some of my aqua props, and we're off to see Steve and Natalia from Portuguese Quinta Garden Culinaria. Uh, they've phoned me last night asking for some help welding up uh, some pits of the roof so they can put the roof back on. So here we go. So I have uh, Tony's welder, which I've had now for a few few days. Um, what I'm going to do is, if you can see the roof here, hang on. So we've re-put this roof back on and we need to re-weld some of these joints and where they were cut on the centre here. Re-weld them as well and then uh, the tiles can go back on. What we've been doing this morning is just chopping out the concrete here uh, just so that the beams fit in flush and then the roof tiles can sit and be cemented on this bottom section. Yeah, so they don't blow off then and it, need, it will need tying into the house somewhere here. 
and these will need welding in the proper place. There we go. So there we go, roof on, all welded up, all the bits put together and all, all Steve and Natalia have to do now is um, put the tiles on and finish the inside of course. Okay so there I've rounded the edges off, I need a little bit more sanding, I've run out of sandpaper but um, there we go and there's lovely wife luxuriating. Luxuriating, yes. Yeah. So it's fixed into the wall, I've got a Still got to box this in and still got to box in the cupboard as you can see but um, yeah we're, we're really pleased with it it's a, so we get a better view then I'm going to take some of this yucca down uh, and obviously the beehives and stuff won't be there so we can see all the way to Castello Branco much much better. So that's all from us this week thanks for watching uh, thanks for liking thanks for subscribing and thanks for ringing that little <laughs> notification bell and um, we'll see you in the next one but the next one might be Tuesday, might be Friday because uh, I've been asked obviously I've got Cindy's barn to um, start and finish but it's also the, the temperature Our, at the moment it's it's, it's a, a little, little bit, bit hot for warm. doing stuff yeah. outside so yes we may we may I think, well I think it'll just be a Friday you do, you you're all going to go on holiday. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> and uh, see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. So we're pretty sure this is Quinn uh, approving of the table move. What are you doing up there? Hey. Oh, Quinn. Is it nice? Oh, yeah. Look at the state of you. You're covered in sawdust.